Welcome to Kemi Talks, an opinion journalism and lifestyle brand. I'm Dr. Kemi Olunlaya. I'm going to be talking about DCP Abakiari and the charges brought against him by the United States Department of Justice. As most of you know, I've been the one covering the hush puppy case from the start. Well, it's not at the end yet, but we did find out two days ago that there would be a trial because Hush Puppy pled guilty and intends to plead guilty in a plea agreement that was signed in April of 2021. In October, Hush Puppy will be sentenced, and I am estimated that he's going to be getting something between 10 and 15 years. He is facing 20 years instead of the regular 30 years if he were to go into a jury trial. Well... Abakiari, DCP Abakiari. It's a very common name because you remember the chief of staff that died was also Abakiari. Now, on Salad Day, some of you followed my video when the ram was about to be killed on my street. And you guys remember I did a Facebook Live. The video is right there on Facebook. On that Facebook Live, we're talking about community. Community is very important to me. I'm a community activist. In Canada, I did a lot of gun violence activism and community activism. In America, I worked in the drug abuse in the community field. Anybody on Nigeria, I worked on helping people on the streets and empowering them, staying away from crime and the market women. When I moved to Lagos in 2019, I started a show called Kemi Takes Lagos, which is based on community, but I had to stop. It was literally a reality show that I was trying to package. I stopped because of the COVID. We were locked down and the rest is history with 2020. And then there was NSARS. It was very hard to move around communities. So I was talking about community building, how we can trust the police more in Nigeria, how we can get police to protect us because a lot of the NSARS agitation indirectly resulted in more crime in Nigeria. We have more banditry, we have more armed robberies, we have more crime, period. At the end of the day, we're not saying if SARS was there, it would be less. But as you remember, I was a proponent of reform SARS rather than end SARS. But at the end, I joined Shagwan with Sonia Segerlink in cutting off all the bad officers that were doing the extortion, killing, and robbery, and all that. Okay, the IGP monitoring unit was dissolved recently. And as you know, the IGP monitoring unit was the ones that came and kidnapped me from Ibadan to Port Harcourt. They could have simply said, we're taking you to Port Harcourt. They said they're taking me to CID and they took off. At the end of the day, the PTSD that I suffered, I'm still on it 50%. There were bad things in the police department. I mean, bad, bad things. One of the officers, DCP Abakiari, was very instrumental to a lot of changes in the police department. You need to know this guy. The word around him is community, okay? I'm doing this video because it's an opinion video. Don't come on my comments and be telling me police has paid me, SARS has paid me, this one, that one. I don't like that bullshit, all right? I know how to analyze situations. I've been doing it for 27 years. Now, if you're just seeing me analyzing news topics, then you're just seeing me. There are people who respect this part of my work. It's called opinion journalism. You can go Google it. Back to Mr. Chiari. Mr. Chiari is very community centered. Some of the stuff he does is the same way some of the Baltimore Police Department and Toronto Police do in the community. We have something called TAVIS, Toronto Anti-Violence Initiative Strategy. I was one of the first people in the community to help Toronto Police pilot that. If you're living in Toronto, Canada, you will know about TAVIS. Police officers come to our neighborhoods. They set up barbecues, street parties, music, food, hot dogs, chips, everything to mingle with the community and get to know them. So on my Sala video, I was talking about how we can build communities, how a whole street, okay, in this area of Sangotedo Aja, my street, okay, a Muslim community leader decides to kill three rams. First day, one ram. Second day, two rams. So while they were killing that first day ram, I was videotaping the whole process of how to do it. The killers were not butchers. They were the sons and grandsons of people that live on this streets, architects, engineers, journalism students. And you saw them on the live video. Mr. Chiari came on the live video, not with a fake account, not with a police account, but with his own personal Facebook verified account. 
and he started discussing, telling me he liked what I was doing. And we want to work together with the community. The conversation is there. A verified account has a blue tick near the comments of the person. And we had a great conversation that eventually many people on that live broadcast converged on his comments and mine. The video is there on my Facebook. I came here to lie up. Mr. Chiari is not new to me. Mr. Chiari, I have never seen face to face, but this man is very, very instrumental to some huge changes in the police department when it comes to public safety. What do we do about kidnappers? They're uncontrollable now. Kidnappers are not just coming in the form of, let me kidnap that person, ask for a ransom, get the money, return the person, no more. Now we have bandits who are already criminals in other areas, and now they're adding kidnapping to their resume. Bandits are kidnapping children. You saw what happened in Greenfield School in Kaduna. You saw the other school in Kaduna. You've seen kidnappings all over the place, our children. You're saying it's not in my back yet? Or you have that NIMBY syndrome. It will never happen to me. That's what we call NIMBY syndrome in America. N-I-M-B-Y. NIMBY. Not in my backyard. Not in my backyard. I don't care. Okay, let me look at channels, news, arise news. Another kidnapping. Okay, it can't happen in my back yet. Until it happens to you, then you know it can happen to you. Then you know police is your friend. Let me say something about this. Okay, the job of the police is to get the kidnappers. Okay, but the way things are now, bandits are also kidnappers and they're carrying rocket launchers. They can shoot a plane down. They've done it to an Air Force plane. And God knows whether they did it to Brutai's plane when, I said Brutai's plane, um, a Tahiru's plane, when that went down. We don't know who's shooting stuff into the skies. You got to be careful. The private jets up there that governors are driving up and down the place. And nobody knows who's in there. They know these planes. They know who to shoot or what to shoot down. You know the army is responsible for the immediate kidnap of an individual. I mean, the police is responsible for the immediate kidnap of an individual. When it can't be controlled by the police is when we now get the specialized police, the SWATs, the SARS, the, you know. And when they can get it, the army gets in. And the DSS and who not. But at the end of the day, okay. One of the things I love this guy for is the fact that he did not play with kidnapping. Yes, the monitoring unit. You know, he's in the IRT, I believe, but that first SARS, you know, and the monitoring unit has had issues. Okay, they disbanded the monitoring unit and they disbanded SARS. What did we get in return? We did five for five. I worked with Shag on that. After five for five, we had some six feminist girls go block Lecky Tollgate, saying that, oh, we don't want to hear anything. They agreed with us. Shego started NSARS. Let him finish it. No, they went and blocked Lecky Tollgate and they went into agitate. It was not necessary. People abused me. People cursed me out, but they didn't see the bigger picture. Look at the end of the thing now. Did CNN show up at the trial? No. The State Department of the United States says maybe nobody even got killed. If you promise that you saw something. Did we not all see, you know, DJ Swift taking bullets out of somebody? We know what happened. We know what we saw. But even the big media you guys worship, they did not show up at the panel. The army came, stated their case. The case was strong. All the people that went out destroying supermarkets and all. All the people that went out looting banks and breaking into banks. You saw how the army moved two billionaires out of a safe at Zenith Bank when the hoodlums got in. Stop it, Nigeria. Wake up. I've been doing these videos for a long time. When NTA called me and said, Auntie Kemi, Dr. Kemi, Madam Kemi, we want to use your videos on NTA shows. And I told them I gave them the copyright permission. Okay? Now I went on a rise news, TVC, all of them are in my DM. Everybody wants me to analyze stuff. I'm doing it on my page. You're watching it. Learn from it. Know the truth. If you, the truth is so bitter, don't follow me. I am tired, tired. Okay. I said, this is my last year in investigative journalism after the Hush Puppy and Woodbury case, because I'm going to governance and I want to do more in lifestyle. Okay. Journalism has many parts. I'm going to be only doing lifestyle and opinions, opinion journalism, but investigating costs money. I don't have money to do a lot. All the work I did with Hushrick, many of you didn't appreciate it until you saw me on a rise yesterday. 
back to Mr. Chiari for the second time. DCP Chiari was instrumental to some major kidnappings. Where Dumi and all of them, Evans, the Igbo guy that was kidnapping people left, right, and center, shooting up people and stuff. Okay, Wadume, okay, Evans, and some other big ones. This guy was in the front lines. Kiari was not sitting behind the desk. He was in the front lines with the guns and everything. Do you know what it is to apprehend these kind of dangerous individuals? Now you got bandits. If a bandit wants to be a kidnapper, they're doing it now. If a bandit wants to be something else, they'll add it to their resume. Simple, you know? Now... On the Chiari charges, it's bogus, all right? As much as I have friends in the FBI, sources, it's bogus. This is very similar to what happened to Alan Oyema. Some people were jealous of Alan Oyema, earpiece. What did they do? We know them. We know their name. They found their way to get charges of indictments to the FBI that he laundered money. Alan Oyema laundered money. Okay, he was vindicated, right? How did he become vindicated? Okay, he was going around buying those planes just, just so he can improve his fleet on airpiece. If you enter one of those airpiece planes and you see how clean it is and how smooth the flights are, you'll know. Some of those people in the cockpit are even veterans from our Nigerian Airways. Rest in peace to my uncle, Lalu Olunloya. He flew the first 747 to New York on Nigerian Airways. If he were alive, I'm sure he'll be with airpiece. After what happened in Nigeria, it was the mismanagement of their pensions and money. But at the end of the day, Mr. Ayema is uploading these planes so that they can travel all over Nigeria. And I have no shame in saying it. I've always said it. I've always done it. Endorsement, if you like. No one has paid me for nothing. I love earpiece, period. Okay, the day I did not take earpiece is the day I cried because I saw poor service and I know the difference. Oh, yeah, I was buying planes, okay, so he can improve the fleet. Turned out that he had bought some planes that crashed. Okay, listen to me carefully, all right? If you want to buy chocolate, you can buy chocolate. But if you buy chocolate that's been sitting in the store for 8 to 10 months and you find a worm inside that and you saw the date would expire, you will know that you brought the wrong thing. Mr. Oyema was buying all that 767 Max. You know those Max planes? Okay. If he had bought the planes, okay. A plane is not chocolate. You're spending a lot of money. You buy Boeing 747 Max planes, maybe two. Then you find out it's crashed in two countries. And then Boeing pulls the plane and says, nobody must fly it because we're checking the computer system. We're checking this. That plane now. What does Oyema do? I want a refund. So when he gets his refund, I'm not saying that's exactly what happened. I'm not going to tell it. But if they're going to give you huge refunds, okay, and it doesn't come directly to your bank account, maybe it goes to another bank account in Canada or your friend's bank account or your family or something, does that make it money laundering? Please. We've, we stood by Oyema. He's been vindicated. Now, I am standing by Kiari because Hush Puppy is a liar. Okay, L-I-A-R. Hush Puppy is an L-C-F. I've always wanted to introduce that one. You know I have SBN, I'm smart but not intelligent. L-C-F. Well, NIMBY is American, not in my backyard. L-C-F, liar, cheat, and fraud. Okay, Hush Puppy is an L-C-F. If the United States Department of Justice knew that Hush Puppy, all right, already implicated Chiari. It shouldn't be coming out now. They signed their plea deal in April, so it should have come out as soon as possible. Now, understandable that this Qatari school, you know, fraud was orchestrated by other people in the scam. Now, the other people in the scam, they say some of them are in Nigeria, others are in America. The ones in America, the two girls, they're out on bail. Okay, they're moving and walking freely in America, ready to do another crime, allegedly. Why do they give them bail? Okay, maybe it's their constitutional right. They arrested them last week on the 22nd of July. This crime happened between January and February of 2020. And at the end of the day, that's, you know, other scams they say Hush Puppy did. There are going to be much more other scams they're going to come up with. Wake up, people. Okay, I'm not interested in the tale of crap, okay? Focus, and don't make this a social media trial. Hush Puppy had an issue, okay? 
Nigerian police usually will charge you to do investigation. They are underpaid. They don't have enough funding. The whole thing is a mess. And some people are trying. So he paid that guy to arrest somebody else. Found out the guy didn't do anything, released him. What's the big deal? Guys, wake up.